Hello guys, this is Adit. Welcome to my channel Movement Science, where I simplify biomechanics with Job. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also check me out on Instagram, where I post pictures of my notes and also put out some daily MCQs. The reference time for all the topics that I'm going to cover will be mentioned down in the description. So check that out and let's get started. In this video, we are going to talk about the gate variables. We will discuss about the temporal variables that is the time and then distance. We will also mention the kinematics and kinetics terms. What are those? So let's start with the topic. So first of all, gate variables. Now variables are the ones which change, right? So these variables change with pain, with age, gender, range of motion, weakness of muscles. So that's the best part about these variables. So as these terms that we are going to discuss, as they change, it will help us in analyzing the gate. As in we can analyze the gate and see if it's different from the normal C or if there is any deviation in the gate because these variables will be the ones which will show us if there is any problem, weakness, pain and other factors that are causing change in the gate. So that is the significance of it and that's why we are going to learn it. Now apart from the temporal and the distance variables, we will also look at the kinematics and kinetics term. Kinematics is the movement, right? So the joint angles and the foot trajectory that we'll be talking about the movement, just the pure movement in gate will be coming under this and kinetics will be where all the forces will be coming. So all the muscle activity with the help of EMG during which phase of the gait, which muscles are activating, all those things will be coming under the kinetics terms. So let's go back to our temporal and distance. We'll focus on this for this video and then these two we will cover in the next video, right? So going to the temporal, there is the stance time, there is the single support time and double support time. Stance time will be the amount of time that you will spend during the stance phase on one extremity in one gait cycle. Then the single support time is basically when you are on your one foot, right? The time spent when you are on your one foot and then the double support time is the time that you spend on both your foot, which we had talked about in the first video, right? You can go back and check the reference. Basically, you keep your first step, right? First step, second step and just before you take your other foot off the ground, there will be a point where both your foot will be in contact with the ground. That will be your double support time. This will increase your stability. So it will be more in old age. So that will tell you that if a person, if you analyze his gait and if his double support time is more, that means he's having problem with balance. So this way gait variables can help us analyze a person's gait and get better insights into their muscle weakness and range of motion problems. The next is the stride duration that is the amount of time that you take to take one stride. So basically one stride is from one step, two step and this one, right? So if you are standing here, this is your one stride over here from one heel strike to the heel strike of the same foot again, correct? So this is your stride length and amount of time taken to cover this much length is your stride duration. And this lasts in an average people to about one second. Next is the step duration. Now that is the time that you spend to take one step. So now over here, if you can see, this is the one step line that is from heel strike of one foot to the heel strike of the other foot, correct? Stride was of the same foot, step was of the other foot, right? So basically the time that you are spending from one heel strike to the another heel strike will be the step duration. This will decrease with pain on the same side meaning because of pain, you will less weight bear on the same side of the pain, right? So that's why your step duration will decrease with pain on the same side and then it will increase on the opposite side because you are spending less time on one side. Obviously, you'll have to spend more time on the other side comparatively and that's how step duration matters. Then going to the next one, that is the walking speed or walking velocity. Now velocity is with direction and speed is without direction. That's the difference, but otherwise they are pretty much the same. So it is the rate of linear forward motion, how quickly you are going ahead. And this speed is determined by your cadence 
and your stride length so how big strides you can take to cover the distance will determine your walking velocity or speed and cadence now what is cadence we'll see here so cadence is the number of steps taken per unit time so if you take one second and how many steps you can take in one second that would be your cadence so in men it is around 110 steps per minute and in women it is around 116 steps per minute does this mean women walk faster than men not necessarily because cadence can vary with your step length basically if you if you are taking shorter steps correct see if you are taking shorter steps your cadence will be high but you will be covering lesser distance but if you are taking longer steps your cadence might be low but you are covering more distance so high cadence does not always mean higher speed but it can sometimes do that so those were the temporal variables which were dependent on time right the stance time single support time double support time correct then after that we saw stride duration step duration after which we saw walking speed or velocity which was dependent on cadence and stride length now let's move on to the distance variables so under distance variables everything is over here first is the stride length so the stride length is basically distance from the heel strike of the left foot to the heel strike of the left foot again right so this is the stride length and this reduces with age because your balance will reduce so you will take smaller steps and it increases with speed of walking because you have to cover more length you will start taking bigger steps right and this will increase your overall stride length next one is the step length step length is basically the half of the stride length correct because it's from one heel strike that is the left foot to the heel strike of the right foot so it is half of the stride length but it is not always the case it does not mean that every time your step length will be half of the stride length now why is this can you guys tell me now this happens because if you have pain on one side what will happen is you take one small step on the one side and then a bigger step on the other side so this will create an imbalance in your step length that is one step will be smaller compared to the other step hence it was not always that the right step and left step are equal and because of this stride length is not always double of your step length right not always double of the stride next is the step width so if you can see over here this is the easiest example i can give the distance between both your feet right how much wide apart you're keeping your feet and walking is your step width now wider the base more will be your balance right so it increases with reduced balance in a person if person has trouble with balancing he'll keep a wider base and walk and an average value of step width is around one to five inches and it will vary among the population and then finally is the degree of toe out how much your foot is externally rotated i would say not really externally rotated but how much is the angle between this over here the second metatarsal and the perpendicular right how much of your foot is going out that is the degree of toe out this will reduce as you keep increasing your speed that's what was seen so these are the parameters that we have and once we understand the normal values the deviation can help us to identify the problems that can be present in the whole gait cycle and come up with a valuable output or a diagnosis in the final case so after this we have the kinematics and kinetics as i mentioned kinematics is about all the joint angles which is the complex stuff as it's seen but i'll try to make it as simple as possible and then kinetics is about the forces that are acting so these two we will cover in the future videos so that's all we have for today let's summarize this quickly so first in temporal we saw the stance time right how much time you spend on the foot single support time how much on the single foot how much on the double foot is double support time after this we saw stride duration how much time you take to take one stride that is around one second for most of the people and step duration which does not always have to be half because we just saw step and stride do not have to be half of each other right step and stride do not have to have that relationship because of pain it can alter a lot of things then we saw walking velocity and speed which are dependent on cadence cadence is number of steps taken in a certain amount of time right and stride length will also affect your walking the stride length gets us over here to the distance 
stride length and step length do not have that relation after which we saw step width which was all about the balance and then degree of toe out so with that we finish up this topic that's all for today guys thank you for watching if you like my video please share it with your friends don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also like the video as it really helps me out also let me know in the comment section what other videos you would like me to cover and see you soon in the next video